Hello. Ice T in the building. Wow. So, I got a question. First thing first, how are you, little lady? How you been doing? Oh, I'm great. So, how you been doing? What's been going on with you? Oh, no, I'm just driving, living, enjoying life. Now, how long have you been a driver? How long have you been a driver out here? <laughs> Uh, 38. 38 years? <laughs> for, a dri- for a driver, for a female driver, that's impressive <laughs> to be out here, to be out here for 38 years. You've seen, right. a, you, you've seen a whole lot of changes in this industry since you first started. And being with those changes, a lot of females are coming into this industry, like, like hand, it's Correct. a lot of females hand over foot that's coming over that's coming over in this industry. Now some of them can handle right. it. Some of them can handle it because they get on their TikToks and they complain like granny, like grandma on a Sunday morning at church complaining. Like, bro, <laughs> you knew what you was getting into. Maybe you just didn't take the time to research or do your background checks, but Hey, babe, this is a lifestyle change. This is an earth shattering lifestyle change. Like you're going to be away from your family. You're going to be on this road for a long time, depending on which division you get into. But for a young, right. but for a young lady like yourself, young lady, get that? Like yourself, yes. and that, and that, been in this game for well over three decades. What are some of the What are some of the things that you're seeing out here that, that touch you the most? Because in that rant video that you did about the females not respecting other females, when you go past them, you say hi, and they look at you like you from another ozone. I'm not here trying to get in your pants or anything like that, but I'm just saying hi. And this is coming from a female. Like a lot of you, a lot of females. Today, females in this industry, you guys are seem to be the most toxic out here. Would would you would, would talk talk about that in that rant in your video? Okay, so I speak to everybody when I'm out here. I don't care what gender you claim to be or whatever. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what country you're from. I'm gonna say hi to you if I pass by you. So when I'm out here and I get such pleasure, such joy, such a thrill when I see another female. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if I see another female out here, I'm going to speak to you. Whether you got your head down, you got your head turned, if we pass by each other, I'm going to give you the respect of you being another female out here, and I'm going to speak to you. And what makes me mad is that back in the day, everybody spoke to everybody. If we seen another female, it was like it was a sisterhood. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you would even come up and get a hug from another female because our female wasn't that many females out here. Now we have an abundance of females, and these newcomers is I don't have, and then half of them look like trash out here. You know what I'm saying? But they, I was gonna do another video about the female that was in the truck stop showing all her little coochie with some Daisy Duke song, but that's another story. Mm. But these females don't want to talk to other females. They don't let want to me, talk to let, other females. Let me stop you right there, man. You know, for all these females that's over here that's that's talking like I can I can wear anything. You can't control what I wear. I wear what I like and I wear what I'm comfortable mm-hmm. in. But you gotta understand what mm-hmm. you gotta understand what type of industry that you're in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you say you saw a female, Ooh. where was she at when you saw her? And, and why do you why do you think that it, what she had on was inappropriate? So where we was at was I was in Sulphur, Kentucky, okay, at the pilot, okay? So the female walks in, and when I say that me and this, it was myself and this other lady, we looked at each other, and she was a truck driver. And we looked at each other, oh, my God, this chick bends over to pick up something on the bottom shelf. And everything was exposed. Hair, everything. I was like, so I, yes, I said, nasty hoe. And she just turns around and she just looks at me. Okay, females like that, what makes it bad out here for females that respect themselves, that 
don't wear all of that crap. I'm not jealous of no female, not by far. It's just, I don't want to show my shit. I don't want to show anything I have because I'm not leaving it to the man's imagination. Let him wonder what I got up under my clothes. Why do I want to sit up here and show somebody everything I got? That's but, a trashy truck driver to me. Now, a lot of female truck drivers that's on this app, on TikTok, Mm -hmm. do a lot of do a lot of they show a lot of inappropriate things but they don't think they they don't think that's the issue because that's what they'll come on here and talk and say that's what they do like for the female that you just saw in the trust stop, that that's what mm -hmm. she do but is that the same female that gets mad when when a guy approaches her in 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 an inappropriate matter like if she was a truck driver, the male truck driver might think she's a, she's a, she's a, a lot lizard. Lock lizard on eighteen wheels. Right. But yet she'll come on TikTok and make a TikTok video talking mm -hmm. about how I'm going to get how I'm disrespected, and you thought I was a I'm a truck driver, and you thought I was a lot lizard and all like that. But Presenting look at the way look at the one. right look at the way you dress. So back to the rant, a lot of females that's in this industry, I guess you could say that they don't, they just don't want to be bothered e even by another female. Like you said that for the men, they come up there. That's why I guess that some of these men feel the way they do. That's why they don't, that's why they don't approach y'all. So that if y'all needs, if y'all, if there's a female that really needs some help and then they get mad and then they go and make a TikTok about it, you can't really blame us because of the way y'all, because of the way y'all act towards us, right? That is true. Yes, I did a video and I know that you probably seen, I did a video about the truck driver that wouldn't help me put my wife resign. I don't know if you've seen that video. Yes, I did a video about that. And yes, I blame the trashy little truck drivers out here, trashy little female truck drivers out here for that. But yes, we still have good men out here that will help. But a lot of the men don't help because of the trash that we have out here. And when I say trash, I don't give a crap who you are. If you present yourself as trash, I'm going to look at you as trash, and I will make a video about the trash. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of trash, a lot of toxicity in, in, in trucking. I'm going to say it's on both sides though, because us guys, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you're in the fuel island and you see a, you see a counterpart in the next fuel island. You say, Hey, what's going on? How you feel? What's up? And yeah, they look at me like, mm -hmm. and then when you go up there, like, if you go up to talk to them, you know what I'm saying? That's why I stopped doing my, that's why I stopped doing my pull-ups because you go up there to talk to, try to talk to a driver and, and it's about trucking. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm coming to you talking about church or religion or anything. The conversation piece is about trucking. Like how long you been out here? How, yeah. how's mm -hmm. the drive so far? You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's what the conversation piece be about. But they look at me like, oh, I don't want to be bothered or who are you or whatever the case. It, it happens with men too. So. So, okay. So I have had a lot of men to come up and try to conversate with me just to conversate about the trucking industry. Ask me the same questions that you just talked about. Okay. And I will conversate with a man all day long. As soon as you show your true intent of the conversation, well, hold, hold. Listen, I'm talking to you, I'm conversating with you, but listen, I got a man. Even if I don't have a man and I see you going in the wrong direction to me, I got a man. And that's how I turn, oh, like I said in my video, the guys would be like, oh, you can't, you don't want to have a friend, want to talk to going down the road. No, but I don't need it because you came off to me wrong. You portrayed yourself as something else. And then you want to throw that in on the end. I like that. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're going to come at me straight, don't be trying to show two sides to the coin. Just come at me straight. If you're going to try to talk to me that way, I can just shut you down. Or I can go for it. One of the two. But I can't stand a man that be sitting up here beating around the bush with the crap. Say what you got to say and let's go. That's what's up. That's what's up. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. And, and I guess what that said right there, Ice-T, I guess that's what that said. There's so many, there's so many female truckers out here that, that, that was, 
approached that way. And now mm. being that they're being that they've been approached that way, that's why they that's that's why they so toxic now. But you don't have to be toxic to everybody. Well, okay. You don't have to be toxic to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Carry yourself respectfully and talk to the man respectfully. If you got to dress like a freaking lock lizard on 18 wheels out here, then expect to get talked to any kind of way by a man. You got to be it. What you expect. And that's a trashy ass from. That's what's up, man. That's, bottom line. That's what's up. Thank you very much, Ice-T, for your time. As always, when we get into a topic, a conversation, or something like that, we will definitely get it in and get it on. Here's a, I, I guess, I, I, never, I never considered this guy as a famous TikToker. I haven't followed him as much, but now since he passed, he's getting a, he's getting a lot of play, and I've seen a few drivers on this app that has passed that hasn't gotten right. that that hasn't gotten as much as as much as much play as this gentleman have don't get me wrong don't hey respect to the man for whatever he did rest in peace to him and my condolences is out to his family but i'm what i'm just simply saying is that there has been other drivers on this app that has passed that hasn't gotten mm-hmm. as much as much play as this man has gotten. Not too long ago, there was a driver by the name of Drive In Drive In Driver, if I'm not mistaken, and he was a he was a African American driver. He died in his truck. So what's going on, TikTok? Long time no see. Before I get into this, I want to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me. All the phone calls, messages up here. I know I didn't respond to most of you. Um, it's not because I don't care. It's just because it was a, a lot of you. Um, and I really wasn't in the position mentally, physically, emotionally, any of that to respond. Now, as a lot of you know, I'm a fairly private person. I don't put too much of my personal life up here. But um, for this particular situation, I'm going to. So. Uh, Quick story time. Where have I been? Well, I was in the intensive care unit for about five days. About two weeks ago, well, whatever my last video was where you guys saw me and I was on my military stuff, um, apparently at that time I had pneumonia. Didn't know I had pneumonia. And a lot of the symptoms of pneumonia, you know, the tiredness, thirsty, hot, like the body aches, all of that stuff coincides with how people feel in the military when they're doing, you know, operations and stuff out in the field, which is what I was doing. So we fast forward after the military stuff, I get in my truck and I'm like, ah, I'm still not feeling good. It's it's just the military stuff. It'll wear off. And um, I was on my way up to Portland, Oregon. Needless to say, I got as far as Wairika, California. I called and I was like, hey, I don't feel good. Um, I feel like my body's like starting to turn off. Um, That's the only way I can explain it. It felt like my body was just like starting to hit like breaker switches and it was just turning off. So, obviously, I'm in a semi-truck, call 911, I get an ambulance out to me, and I don't remember anything after getting on the gurney in the ambulance. Like, I literally just blacked out. And I don't remember the first two and a half days of being in the intensive care unit. I physically don't remember waking up, talking, I don't remember any of that. So, there was a whole plethora of events that was happening. I had pneumonia. Somehow the pneumonia affected my kidneys, and somehow my kidneys affected my blood sugar level. Everything was just going wrong. Needless to say, I lived through that. Here I am. I am back at work, trying to get back in the groove of things. Um, Still kind of tired at times, you know, but uh, I'm pushing through, you know. With that being said, I'm back at work. I'll get back to making content. Got some cool stuff coming up here that you guys are going to see and um, all that. But um, thank you guys once again for reaching out. It means the world to me. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys have a good one. He was at a, he was at a fuel stop. There hasn't been no activity 
on his uh, on his vehicle. I believe somebody was in there the same time as him. He was on his 34 or something like that. Somebody must have saw him get in his truck and then they they didn't see him get out or anything like that. They went inside of the pilot. I believe that's what it was. And they had the pilot to come out, the people of the pilot to come out and knock on the door. It's still no answer. They called the police to do a wellness check. They got in his truck and he was, he passed in his truck. So it wasn't as much as it wasn't that much stitching. It wasn't that much duetting. It, and it wasn't that much talk about that particular driver. You know what I'm saying? There was another driver. They pick and choose who they want to talk about. Exactly. There was another driver, a female driver, that everybody didn't like, but she passed. But I haven't talked about him specifically because I haven't gotten too much of the details of what happened. But the article that I have read, the article that I have read about pissed off trucker, and that's what I'm talking about. Hey, what's up, TikTok? You know, you see those videos about people saying, hey, let me know if I'm on your For You page. But if I'm not on your For You page, I don't care. All I care about is getting home on home time. That's what I care about more than anything else. I don't give a shit if I'm on your For You page or not. And if I am, great. And if I'm not, that's great too. Who cares? But I appreciate all you guys on TikTok. I do. Y'all are good people. But if I'm not on your For You page, I don't care. Just get me home, goddammit. It says that he was on the road, something, he crashed off, it crashed off in the house. ditch or something like that. Yes. Right. They wasn't sure what was the cause, but they're going to say it was a medical issue. So I'm assuming he probably had a massive, ha had a massive heart attack or maybe a, ha a massive stroke while he was driving. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. A lot of us is. A lot of us out here is we're, we're losing a lot. We're losing a lot of truckers to trucking. Oh, yes, we are. We're losing a lot. And that is something that a lot of people is not talking about. But as you just said, people is picking and choosing who they want to talk about. So are you familiar yeah. with, uh, with Pissed Off Trucker and his TikToks? Okay. okay. I was like, no, I don't know him, and I just found out about it this morning. I just read the article, and then I looked him up on TikTok. But I didn't know the first RIP on him, and condolences to his family, and much love. But until I find out some more information about it, then I really can't say anything on it. But getting back, it, every, people on TikTok, they pick and choose who they want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people just do it just to join the bandwagon, just to make a video. It's, I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. If I'm wrong, forgive me, but a lot of these people do these videos just to do a video to get likes or whatever. Facts. That's my opinion. And they use... I said facts. That is so facts yeah. right there because a lot of people... A lot of people just jump on the bandwagon. I just seen, I just seen one of the YouTubers, one of the popular YouTubers on on his channel, and mm -hmm. he over here talking about that pissed off trucker was a famous TikToker, and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure if he was that famous, but I, but when I went to his page, I respected, mm -hmm. him. I respected him because of what he was bringing on his page. Even though that he was called right. pissed off trucker, he was bringing like some positivity, like on some for real stuff, like get me home type deal. He didn't care about right. anything. He didn't care about anything else. He only cared about getting home to his family and his daughter, so he can have, so right. he could spend time with his family and in his and his daughter. And in his lifetime, he was able to do that. But uh, but yeah, as I said before, rest in peace to 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 the young man. It's, it's unfortunate what happened, but on the flip side, we're losing a lot out here, man.
We're losing a lot. I, like I said, I was just recently sick. I came down with, uh, with pneumonia again. And uh, yeah, and it was, bed. yeah, it was from what I understand. What I came down with was Legionnaire disease. It's an infection. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's a pneumonia infection of the lungs that fills that filled up half of my own lung. So right. I'm just now, I'm just not, I'm not fully recovered yet because I still got some residual coughs, but I'm getting in my health. Right. I'm looking at my health, especially at my age. I'm looking at my health a little bit more closely. I'm looking at my health a little bit more closely. Now at the age I am now, I never realized that I had to take one of their vitamins every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, yep. I, when I was young, I was, when I was young, I ain't need one of their vitamins, but God damn it, man. I gotta take C, <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G's. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, like, I'm like, I'm, I went into my vitamin store and I was like, whoa, I gotta take all the vitamins of the alphabet. I was like, fuck. Yeah, you got to take this every day to make sure your immune system is on point. I was like, okay. The guy's, the guy's health out here is important. For you, Ice-T, three decades in the game, how do you do it? How do you keep to maintain your health? Because you're a beautiful woman at your age, man. Come on. How do you do, how do, you do it? I, well, out here on the road, I eat a lot of fruit, tons of fruit, and that's my weakness right there. And I try to keep the, the probiotics in check with myself, but I don't like a lot of the fast food out here. I have my air fryer and stuff like that, and then I don't eat a lot of fat and food when it comes to when I cook. And vitamins and healthy food, but if I could say I would eat fruit three times a day, seven days a week if I could, but I know I need them. But that's just how I take care of myself out here. The weight gain that I did, that came from all of the treatments and my cancer and stuff like that. And I'm just waiting until all of this just leaves. So I just try to stay healthy with healthy food. A lot of vegetables, a lot of vegetables. Oh, and a lot of vitamin E on the skin. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Vitamin D, yeah. C. Oh, I'm, I'm, See, I, what you do, what the females should do out here on the road, okay? Because I don't use soap on my face. I haven't used soap on my face since my mom stopped us at the age of eight or nine years old. Okay? I don't. It's All funny. I do, it's funny. I don't use soap either. I use. Uh, so you just. Right. And then after you get through cleaning your face with chemo or your alcohol, whichever one. And then you get the uh, vitamin E in the little capsule, squeeze it out, put it on your face, massage it in there. And that's all I use on my face. I use nothing else. Okay, that's what's up. That's all I use. I use Nazima. That's the same thing. That's my morning ritual. Mm -hmm. I got a bottle of water poured in my hand, wipe it on my face. I take the Nazima. Keep it on my face for uh, for a few minutes while I'm doing my little bird bath and all like that, and then go back and wipe off my yeah. wipe off my face and everything, brush my teeth, and uh, and keep it going, man. Keep it going. No doubt. Again, everybody, make sure that your health is on point because it's important. I know you just concentrating on the bag and everything. Your health, what without your health, man, you're not going to be able to get that bag. Best conversation starts here on a lockout. Man, podcast show. And that is what's up, everybody. I do appreciate you guys listening. Thank you very much. Thank you to Ice T. 30 years in the game, three decades, about to be four. And give some, put some respect on this lady's name. You guys can find her on TikTok up under Ice T. Until next time, everybody, y'all take it easy. Ice T, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome, baby. There's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water. In the, the water. In the water.